everybody, today we're going to be making a Mancala board. Um, if you're not familiar with Mancala, it's um, also known as African chess and it's uh, called a sowing game, like sowing seeds in the ground, um, as you'll see why when you play the game. Um, it's really fun, it's one of the most popular games in the Readhead program at PS116 and I think um, everyone's going to have a great time with this at home right now and hopefully inventing some really interesting new ways to play the game and sharing it with all of us here in the community. I really hope you enjoy this project. Please let me know what you think by emailing me at virtualmakerlab at gmail.com. Please make sure that you check with your parents before you email to me to just make sure it's okay. All right, so let's go right to it and get started. Alrighty, so for this project, you'll need just three things. The first thing is an empty egg. The one that I have today is a plastic egg carton. Um, there are also cardboard and foam egg cartons. I just thought it would be fun to have a clear one. The second thing that we need for this project is a pair of scissors. I'm using some grown-up scissors, but the material that egg cartons are made out of should be pretty handleable for you to cut with children's scissors. Um, no problem. If you have any trouble though, feel free to ask a grown-up in your home to help you. The other thing that you're going to need is something to use for markers. I am using um, money from my piggy bank for this. I'm going to use pennies um, to do mine. Um, but another thing that people use a lot, you can use marbles, you can use beads. If you have a lot of beads, you can use pieces of cereal. You could use um, dried beans is actually the, I think the original thing that's used in this game um, is beans or seeds. Um, so because we have 12 cups, there's three um, markers per cup. That means we need 36 pennies. So I'm just gonna get my money ready first. One, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna set these aside for now. This I'm gonna keep over here because later I wanna show you an idea that I had with or other types of coins. Um, all right, so all that you need to do for this project is go ahead and cut to separate the egg tray from its lid. And then cut this in half. It doesn't have to be perfectly divided in half, it just has to be approximately divided in half. And then, when you're ready to play the game, what you'll do is put it just like this, and these ends of the tray will become the goal for, for each person's side. So, now we're done. At this point, all that needs to happen is decorations, and I'm just gonna take a minute. I decided I'm just gonna doodle with my Sharpie on it, so I'm just gonna put some little squiggles and decorations on it. Nothing too exciting. Um, Right now, probably off camera later, I'll do a little bit more to make it fancy. But um, this is a pretty, um, this can take you a long time or a little bit of time, depending on whether you enjoy the decorating part more or you're really anxious to getting get to the playing part. I'm just putting stars on the side of mine and squiggles. Okay, I think that's enough for now. So now I'm gonna, Load up my coins and get ready to play. So three goes in each cup. And that is all. So in case you've forgotten how to play the basics of Mancala, what happens is each person um, who's playing has one side of this board. So I'm gonna say this is my side. My opponent is gonna use this side. When it's your turn, you can pick um, markers from any cup that you would like on your side. So I'm gonna start with this cup. And then you move around the board counterclockwise. This on my right side is my goal. This is my partner's goal. So what I pass here, I wanna put 
markers in here to get myself points, but when I pass my part, my opponent's um, goal, I will skip it so I don't give them points. So I've taken them from this cup. Each cup that I pass by, I will drop a coin into. If I land on a cup that has coins in it, my turn continues. I can remove everything from that cup and keep going around the board. I've put one in my goal there. And look, I've landed on one that has coins in it again. So I'm gonna continue my process around the board. Whoa, I'm getting lucky on this one. I'm skipping my opponent's goal and I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> Whoa, all right, still going. You can see it's pretty fun when you're the first person to go. A lot of times you can get a pretty good streak like this, especially if you're strategic about what cup you play in, uh, you start in. This game is also known as African Chess. It can be a really strategic game or it can just be a mindless kind of game. Um, if, you're, if you're really into strategy, you can start calculating how many, how many spaces there are so you can get the maximum number of turns. I'm still taking my turn, believe it or not. All this time has been my turn. So, two. Oh my goodness, this turn's never gonna end. I'm on the, I, I don't even need an opponent right now. Okay, so now I've my turn is finally ending. I've come to a cup that is empty. This is where my next coin should go and it happens to be an empty cup. When that happens, when I get to an empty cup, boom, my turn's over. The other time way my turn can end is let's say I had gotten all the way over to here and my last coin was in my goal. That is also the signal for the end of your turn. You keep playing until one player has no more coins in the cups on their side and that means that they can't take their turn. That means the game ends even if the other person has stuff to still play. And then you stop, you count how many coins are in each person's goal. Whoever has the most number of coins or markers or whatever you're using is the winner. There's so many ways to play and I really wanna encourage everybody to invent your own way to play and your own house rules to the game. Just to be clear, inventing rules for a game doesn't mean inventing the rules in the middle of the game. It means at the beginning of the game, everybody knows what the rules are but they don't have to be the standard rules. They can be a different kind of rule. So the reason I kept these coins over here on the side, imagine if instead of using all pennies, this is my markers, I switched out some of these pennies for coins that were worth more money. So like, let's say I used quarters and nickels and dimes in here as well as the pennies. And then instead of counting just the number of markers in the end, we actually count the value of the money in each cup, which I think could make it really fun as you try to get the quarters and the nickels into and the dimes into your thing and put the pennies in the other person's cup. So you try to whisk those away. I think that would be a really fun way to play. Another idea that I had was a version of the game that I'm calling Stinker, which is you use everything, um, all the markers are the same, and then you take one thing that's different. So like, let's say I'll just keep um, this nickel in here, and the nickel is the stinker. So when you play this version of the game, your, um, your object would be to keep the stinker out of your goal. So as you're going around and getting rid of coins, when you come to your goal, don't put the stinker in your goal. You have to keep trying to pass it back to the other person and try to get them to be forced to put it in their own goal. And then I would say when that happens, the person who's the st who is forced to put the stinker in their side is the loser. The game ends immediately. So those are two different versions I came up with. I really hope you have fun coming up with some ways to play Mancala in your own special way and then share them with us here. You can shoot me an email at virtualmakerlab at gmail.com and tell me about the way that you play and I can share it with our other viewers. Thanks everybody.